Hello, humble viewers. Welcome to this West Network's review of the Samsung Odyssey Arc. My name is Nick, and I will be your guide on this journey. So for those of you that have been around before, we don't just test one monitor at a time. We have a habit of only doing three and connecting them all together and playing video games on them. Now, these monitors, or TVs, depending on who you ask, are pretty freaking cool. Samsung likes to boast that it will overwhelm your senses, and boy were they right. I never wanted to hit my face into the wall as much as I wanted to when trying to get three of these to work together. It wasn't fun. So starting off, we have some tech specs of these monitors. Uh, they are 55 inches, sporting a 1000R curvature that are rocking a quantum mini LED panel with built-in surround sound enhanced by Sound Dome. What Sound Dome is? No idea. I couldn't really find anything online about it or Samsung's forums. I'm assuming since it's just a really curved screen and massive, it's round sound? Surround sound? I guess? I don't know. So they don't have G-Sync, but they do have FreeSync. They are 165 hertz on the refresh rates with one millisecond response times, and they do have HDR10 plus gaming. They are 4K with Samsung's AI enhanced experience, but let's be real, no one's really 4K gaming these days, and if you have DLSS on, that's not true 4K gaming. So, I mean, it's a tough pill to swallow, so if you need a minute, just take that minute now. I'll wait. All right, I lied, it's not a minute, but we're moving on. So included in these Samsungs is this massive dock. That's what she said. For reference, I can pretty much palm a basketball, and this thing is massive. It's pretty much the size of a 4090, probably weighs at least 10 pounds. It's, it's a brick. You could build houses with it. How Samsung has designed this, it is pretty solid. You've got four inputs for HDMIs, for your sources, a one connect port, that comes out to the arc, so you only have one cable running to it, and you only have to do the switching at the dock level, so if it's mounted up somewhere, you don't gotta get up behind it all the time, which is nice. Then you also have built-in LAN port as well as some USB ports for more connectivity. So getting to the software side, um, it needs help. It's not very good. One of the cool features that they do have is essentially built-in RDP functionality. Uh, essentially, any device that you have connected to this, like your computer, you can remote in and control it, which is a cool bonus. Not a game breaker for most people at all. The other features that this TV comes with that I like to boast about is built-in xCloud gaming, Bluetooth to connect your controllers to, unfortunately, it does have Google Stadia, RIP, and some other knickknacks as well, just default apps, Netflix, Twitch, the basics. Something else that these have is called multi-view mode. Now, multi-view mode has been getting a bit of flack, it looks like, on the forums. And a lot of the complaints is mainly more so, I would say, geared towards the console gamer side. So if you're a PC user, you're not really going to notice this because you'll just have something like fancy zones more likely set up or just little toll windows and it, it's not an issue. But the issue is with multi-view mode is people can't be playing, for example, their Xbox, but then also have multi-view up and have something open like Twitch or YouTube, you know? Something that most PC users would have on their second monitor or even from a productivity standpoint, if you're working and have Netflix open on the side or Spotify or something like that. Multi-view mode really doesn't support that besides a few specific apps, one of them being like the Samsung TV app, but who watches TV, let alone Samsung TV? I don't know. So they do have some cool features software-wise, but at the same time, they aren't really groundbreaking. Some of the older t smart TVs, or even newer smart TVs, they are pretty standard with these features. My LG I bought a couple years ago now has all these besides RDP. It has Bluetooth, I can connect my Xbox controller to it. It's got GeForce experience, so I can stream right to my TV and just an Xbox controller, so there's no need for a console or a PC or anything else. I can just stream games right to my TV, just like the Arc. And it was like 350 bucks. So, a little steep on the price point as I believe they are $2,999. They did go on sale briefly. Uh, I think they were about $1,000 off. I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's right. So as far as price goes compared to what you're getting, man, it can be kind of a trade-off, I'd say, depending on what exactly you're looking for. Another feature that a lot of people seem to be complaining about in the forums is the lack of having multiple sources open at once. So some of the older Odysseys, uh, you were able to have sometimes up to three sources at once playing at the same time. Despite the arts being massive, you can't do that. 
All right, let's get to the main point of why you're here, and that's to see three of these together and some video games played on them. Now, let me ask you, is this practical? Nope. Do you need this at home? Probably not. And is it freaking awesome when it was working and you're able to use it? <laughs> Absolutely. At the time, our computer, our test rig, if you will, it did not have a 40 series card in it. It was rocking a 3090 with an i9 1098XE, 32 gigs of RAM at 2666 megahertz. None of it was overclocked. It was all stock, bare bones. We just put it together out of the box, left it there since, and we saw how it did with some games. Did phenomenal. But I know a lot of people are probably going to be bummed and be like, oh, where's the 40 series? Well, good news for you. We have 40 series. We have new rigs. Bad news is we need to do a follow-up video featuring those specs running these games on these three screens. So stay tuned. There will be a follow-up video about that. But for now, we only had the 3090 during the time that we recorded this. So when it came to troubleshooting and setting this up, we were having an issue where... Two of the monitors were really fine, but when we introduced a third one, it just wouldn't connect. Like, the computer could recognize three monitors fine, but the monitor wouldn't recognize the computer. So we weren't too sure what was going on with it, and the fix for it made not a lick of sense at all. But ultimately, what we did was we swapped Dock 2 with Dock 3. And when we did that, I'm talking it was glorious. Our resolution was a whopping 6480 by 3840 when they were vertical. When they're horizontal, I have no idea because we did not pay attention. We were just in awe because it was so awesome. The refresh rate we did keep at 120 to not completely blow up the computer. We know they are 165, but this was again before we had the 40 series cards. We were still using the 3090 and just trying to see if it would even work because we were skeptical. <laughs> So despite the whopping resolution of 6480 by 3840, or when we put it horizontal and it was even wider, we still could not load an entire image of Ryder's mom. There's no hope. So the three games that we tested were Spider-Man, Wildlands, and Dirt 5. Now I know you're probably thinking, oh, we're Cyberpunk. Well, I'll tell you what, we did do Cyberpunk. It didn't go well. We got maybe 30 frames, if we were lucky, in the loading screen. But we will save that for the 4090 series video and we'll see how that does. All in all, the games did perform really well. The only one I would notice something weird with was Spider-Man and it was only when they turned the screens horizontally. So all the games maintained over 60 FPS fine. We did have DLSS enabled, everything as high as we could go. The only thing that Spider-Man was doing and we think it was just something because it's such a wide resolution, it's really not supposed to be supported or just no one really thought that they'd be connecting three of these machines together, but people like us are around, so we did. On the sides of the screen in Spider-Man, it would occasionally become like just solid black bars. Like it just looked like the screen was cut and it didn't do it all the time. And it didn't do it at all when we had them vertical, it was just horizontal. So. I was assuming the game just can't really handle that too well, and that is why it was doing the black bars. Again though, in Vertical and the other games, there was no issues at all. Wildlands horizontally looked great. Dirt 5 was awesome, super immersive. We brought in our racing sim, we connected that up, it was great. I think if you really want some sort of sim gaming, or if you are putting them in vertical mode, I'd say 3 is really cool to use for most games. If they're vertical, horizontal could be a little much because it's, it's a lot to look at. It's a lot of screen. So overall, these are some really cool screens. They offer a lot of cool features. Nothing too mind blowing, I will say that. It's more so just the size and the resolution aspect that's really awesome with them. Software, again, personally, it's really nothing to write home about. A lot of the features, again, we already see in a lot of basic smart TVs, minus the RDP function. Like that, that is kind of cool. but. They are really cool TVs, monitors, um, all around. We have some techs here in the office. They've been using them ever since we got them back in October. One of them even got an extra one for their home office that they use for gaming primarily. And he says he'll never go back to using anything else smaller than the Arc. So do with that information what you will. Personally, I think anything bigger than the 49 inch Ultra wides are a bit overkill. I love my Neo G9. It's been my daily driver for about a year now. The only downside is it's still 1440p and not 4K. 
if Samsung could just make a 4K version, I'd be so happy. We'll see what they do in the 2023 year. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button, bell notification, the typical, please come back and watch our videos spiel. Uh, we will be doing a follow-up video on the arc, spanning three of them, more gaming, but more proper. And by proper, I mean actually run the in-game benchmark, sat on the side after burner running, showing temps, showing overclocks, whole nine yards. And again, it's gonna be with the 40 series. We have multiple 4090s in stock. We'll see actually how Cyberpunk holds up, ideally better, but we'll see because it is Cyberpunk. And with that, humble viewers, stay tuned. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Why are you still here? Get, go! Go watch all our other videos. Jeez. Unreal. <laughs>